Welcome to RPG Archive. We got a hell of a show today. We got Teddy, the unofficial uh, unofficial co-host of RPG Archive. Teddy, how are you? Great. Officially unofficial, but I'm loving it. <laughs> loving being back. I'm, uh, ready to dig through the archives, shall we say. That's right. They, well, before we do that, make sure you check out Teddy's channel, Majority. He's kicking out the content as always. And then we're also on the button mappers. Uh, we're embarking on kirby month shortly so if you like the pink crusader you'll love kirby month and no it won't suck anyway <laughs> uh today we're doing a little something a little different we're digging through the archives it's a series we're in, we're kicking in where we get to open up what we've done in the past and see if things have changed see if things have moved forward and uh i'm pretty excited we're, we're tackling we're, if you're looking for the highlights, we're tackling Dragon Quest Three, the Chrono series. We get, just got that Chrono Cross remake, and then the SMT series. I think we're mostly talking about five, but uh, we're gonna probably mix some three in there for you. Then we're gonna talk about the future uh, RPG plans for RPG Archive, what we're doing in the future for you guys. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, you're, if you're watching this, you've probably already done that, but you know, <laughs> just be a gem. All right. Um, you want to make sure you don't miss an archive, so you know there's lots of RPG goodness to go around. We've been doing this for a hot minute. Spencer and I, like, we did our Dragon Quest One archive in like December of 2020. Hmm. It's been a good year and a half, and in that time, we've really managed to, uh, you know, archive quite a few substantial RPGs from notable series like Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger. I'm happy calling it the Chrono Trigger series. <laughs> Yep, and uh, Shin Megami Tensei. And so, you know, part of the concept for digging through the archive is making sure that we are really honoring these games. I think there is some timeliness to how we recorded them and information that's come out about them that's really kind of fascinating. These you know, very old, antiquated RPGs are still proving their place in the modern gaming sphere. And so we want to honor that and recognize it and talk about it today. Absolutely. Without further ado, you ready to jump in? Start digging? A shovel. <laughs> Get your shovels, boys. We're going to talk about Dragon Quest III. Uh, Dragon Quest III, a while ago we covered it. It's got the HD 2D remake coming out. It's made by the boys that made uh, Oct Octopath Traveler. Uh, we're very excited about it, and we want to discuss what we do know about it, what we want out of it, and... Um, a couple other things. So before, without much further ado, uh, HD 2D remake. I can't find any official release date. Yeah, I gotta think it's the end of the year. What do you What do you think? I think the end of the year. What do you think for the release date? I mean, historically, when they've announced recent Dragon Quest titles, what was it like a year away? And when did we watch this? We watched this like was that earlier this year when Square Enix had that conference, or was it last year? Last year, yeah. Okay, it was like, yeah, mid, late last year. I can't see this taking that long. There's not, I can't see there being that much to update. They're probably, just, you know, recognizing the gaming landscape, Square Enix, and when this will, you know, do its best. So I think that maybe that's why they're holding on to it. I think clearly, like, got their foot in the door. We've seen some gameplay from the trailer, unlike something like Dragon Quest Twelve, like a little more hush-hush. They don't want to give too much away. But at the same time, I think that they're... I don't expect to see it this year. Hmm. I was a little surprised because... I'm trying to remember when they announced the Final Fantasy re Pixel Remasters. But I feel like those just came out in like this huge flurry. And granted, it's Final Fantasy. And then over here, Dragon Quest isn't exactly what Final Fantasy is. But I was a little surprised to see them all just get rushed out like that when Dragon Quest was announced and then Radio Silence for forever. Um. I, I don't know. I got to hope that it's... I guess I hope that it's this year. Um, I don't know if we'll play it, per se, for the show. I'm sure we'll, at some point, dig in and have fun with it. Uh, we don't know a whole lot else about what like, major changes that they're making. We've seen the the graphics. They look beautiful, I think. you can see. I like that you can see like the sprite or the characters in the combat. That's a really... It almost looks more like Golden Sun. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. 
We got like yeah. actual characters, and you see their backs, and it and it's nice to see that the you can see the like, close ups of the characters, so that their classes make a difference in how they look more so than it has that signature kind of like a uh, church mural mm. art style, like of that's clearly an octopath traveler, but I think like I am Setsuna as well. Yes, it's, I mean, and I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, I do feel like on the one hand, like is does that conflate? Dragon Quest with these other RPGs too much, and is that going to hurt the style? I don't know. Maybe it's going to bring out an interesting art style. I could imagine like a vivid looking slime. I don't know. Like that could be cool, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, for reference. Or, you know, I guess that would bring life to a couple of the stories that we do recall and that are so significant within Dragon Quest 3. I think it's not going to. I'm curious about how it will address some of the things that were. How would we say maybe outdated or of like an earlier time? Like I still remember the merchant quest, yep. you know, being like a whole struggle. And so like, is a modern gamer going to know what to do with that? Uh, or even like uh, the the elf thing, you know, like that happens. You got to sail across the sea. But there's some stuff that's a bit cryptic and I'm concerned about that for a modern gaming audience. But at the same time, a lot of people will probably go hype over it wonder what the sales would be like it is really interesting because dragon quest 3 like overseas didn't really sell too much and i think you mentioned um in terms of a release of the flurry you know with final fantasy i think you know we probably got more information on that being in the west versus you know even though it was a global reveal for dragon quest you could tell that was for a japanese fan base oh yeah oh yeah well, what's your take uh, what in Dragon Quest Three, if they do it right, this could be the best entry point for people to get into Dragon Quest. I I honestly do think Dragon Quest Three is the quintessential Dragon Quest adventure. Um, it's just that it's it's a little bit outdated, and and you could get better elements from other games like Five is a little cleaner. Um, I think Eight is the perfect entry point, but Three. Three is like the base Dragon Quest game where it's like you got a little bit of a story and you got your party members that don't have too much going on, but that's, again, kind of a Dragon Quest thing. And then they got a really cool combat system with, with cool classes. And I think that's the perfect way to introduce people. And I think Dragon Quest Three, the HD 2D remake, is the is like a really strong way to get new players in. And hopefully it does. It's funny because I think that Dragon Quest Three probably bears the most semblance with a lot of these really customizable RPG kind of games. Like we're playing Etrian Odyssey. That's it's very similar in that regard. You could probably see, you know, some semblance of Dragon Quest Three in the Etrian series, for that matter. Oh yeah, I think that story and stories within Dragon Quest Three are enticing enough and technically it is kind of like the prequel narrative wise for the Erdrick trilogy so i mean there is some logic to making that one the most accessible it's also the one that was like the most technologically efficient up to that point for its hardware there were some notable upgrades not just mechanically but also just in terms of like logic with your characters like dragon <laughs> quest 2 had like three weaklings and dragon quest one was just your main character and you'd be one person one monster on the screen while you're one protagonist fighting it's it very antiquated and you don't really see that a lot in rpgs nowadays usually it's a party mm -hmm. i think that dragon quest 3 is is kind of the origin of like the p rpg party mechanics and it handled it mostly well i do think you know as far as recommending dragon quest to people three is a safe pick Mm -hmm. Definitely in the top three, you know, Dragon Quests that are recommendable in my view. Yeah. So, what do you? What are the things that you're looking for in the Dragon Quest HD remake? Like, what what would make it worth playing again? Because you've obviously we played Dragon Quest three. You know, it's a thirty hour, forty hour adventure. I can't remember, but what would make it worth it to you to go back? Another five years. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, i'm with you i don't know if i would i don't know if there's anything they can do to make me like return to it so quickly and replay it um and i think you kind of alluded to some of it is hopefully they can polish up some of the loose ends some of the the quests that you know 
you revisit this town at night after doing the X thing. It gets it's very cryptic and and hard for modern gamers to get to get behind that. Um, so hopefully they polish up some of that. I think the graphics look great. I I know this is a controversial thing. But I would hope that they would revamp the class system a little bit, add some new classes. Um, mm. I think just a lot, a lot more new classes and some new paths. And I think, I think a lot of that would help make it more fun. Let's see, what were the classes even? I remember like the warrior, the fighter, the mage, the sage. There's like a thief class that was added for the Game Boy Color, by the way. There were a couple classes that were added that, and I think the SNES version that weren't in the original on the NES. So that's entirely possible and plausible. I'm wondering what they would add. And kind of a footnote: I was looking, listening back through the archives, digging through the archives, some might say, and <laughs> realized that is the, isn't this the first Dragon Quest where you can actually be a dragon? Does the sage? Turn into one in a spell or something. Sage has a spell like B Dragon, and that's how I like farmed for metal slimes. If they did like monster recruiting or something, I don't know. There's some potential there. That's a really good point. Monster recruiting has been a staple of the series for a long time. I thought it was more of a one off, but I'm finding it in a lot of different Dragon Quest iterations now that I'm looking back at it. So yeah, they could put it put in a monster recruiting thing, and that'd be really cool. Mm. Well, you know what else would be cool? When Dragon Quest XI got the remaster, the S edition, mm -hmm. it came with like a bunch of like challenges. Now, I know that's not every gamer's forte. Some people just want to play for the core game. But I think Dragon Quest Three lends itself neatly to challenges like play the game, you know, without becoming a sage, with never dying or, you know, like, or I don't know, get all the mini medals. And so like maybe cool little love letters like that since this exactly kind of what this game is is a love letter would be nice it would be a nice little tribute it's not exactly a new game anyway i thought you meant something different so when you say challenges you mean like achievements yeah when you start off in quest 11s it's a little bit different actually because it just lets you pick what challenges you want to enable for the game you know what i'm talking about yeah so you're saying the challenge is like the urdric challenge where where you you make the enemies harder Something like that. That would be freaking cool. I think they should. That could get me to replay it. That's the only way I'll play Dragon Quest XI again, is if I play on the, the challenge mode. Um, and yeah, that would be fun, is to make the game really fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is already a challenge. It's not like it's the easiest RPG ever, but it's um, yeah, that would make it a, like a whole new playthrough, is to try, really trying to min-max your characters. Um, little slime mode or something. I don't know. <laughs> part of the class system that I wish that they would revamp for Dragon Quest Three is they introduce it. I think mostly in Six, where the the physical dealers, like the the um, martial artists, I guess, and the warriors, they actually have skills that they can use, as opposed to it just being basically a a turn of which equipment they can wear. Um, they actually have skills and, and I think it just adds a lot more, um, a lot more depth to, to a fighter if they can do stuff instead of just making sure they always attack. Um, mm. so I'm hoping that they add something like that. Now they don't have to, they could just go with the classic class system. I think a lot of people would be happy with it, but for me, if they're going to remake it, I think you just overhaul the whole thing. Yeah, sure. I think that some remake aspect and that's not strictly being like a remaster with new visuals pretty significant you know especially like as a previous fan what do i want for newcomers yeah i do want this to be accessible i don't want it to be super cryptic like i obviously the more people i can pull into the dragon quest series the better the happier i am because i think it's a great series and i think it needs to get a lot of love here in the west to continue and persist in the west something historically it's not really gotten and i think we've been lucky over the past five years to get what we get mm. We've had to fight for that. We had to fight to get seven on the 3DS. <laughs> oh, my you know, I God. Think it's, <laughs> there were petitions. It's really a... Oh, my gosh. I, I made one. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing, you know, that 
we've gotten what we've gotten, and I want that to continue. I don't want this to become a relic of the past. Like even back in the days when Dragon Warrior first came out, it really was. You know, nobody bought this game on the NES, and so it's like. And then I think we four was the last one that we got. So a lot of that was like yes. predetermined, just simply based on loyalty in the West, and so. I, I like the trajectory that Dragon Quest has been heading on, that it's become more of a global sensation, not strictly relegated to Japan. And they see there is a clamor for this classic turn-based RPG style that has this kind of charming story, art development, character development, etc. And also like the, the original RPG like style. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing we did, I did want to cover, we had missing content from Dragon Quest Three. I think this was in in comparison with the Switch versus the Game Boy Color version. Can you elaborate? Sure. So I'm not fully versed on this, but what I was reading was that the Switch port is a port of the iOS version of Dragon Quest Three, which chose to omit things like some of the cheesy board games like throughout the game you get these tombola tickets hmm. i don't remember if they were called that in dragon quest 3 then you play the board and then also there's a missing bonus dungeon that was added in the game boy color i think the bonus dungeon is the first dungeon that appears in the beginning of the game where you answer existential questions you know would you eat meat you know for the rest of your life or become vegetarian and then it kind of determines like your character stats uh as opposed to things like just inserting the character, your name, and that, you know, configuring the st statistic upgrades. I'm not 100% on all the information there, so I don't know. But there is a question mark about whether the Switch port is going to include those features. I think this is a question of, like, well, how much is being remade and, you know, from the ground up versus remastered. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested to see. I don't know how pivotal it really is that they have that early segment but if you've ever played like a pokemon mystery dungeon they do the same thing they ask you these existential questions you know uh, are you a fan of electricity or a poison you know electricity <laughs> <laughs> um and then that kind of determines well you're pikachu you know you're not grimer so i don't but the thing that makes it different with dragon quest 3 is that one question does become especially significant towards the end of the game mm. Even if it's not that significant, there's a tie-in. Yeah. So, like, I would like... I, I think it's it's kind of important, but it depends how it's handled. I'd be open to either way. But GC was all right. I know you're not a fan of the sub mini games in the Dragon Quest ones, but considering this was the first time that yeah. mini games were introduced in the Dragon Quest series, I think there was, like, a Tombola ticket in Dragon Quest 2, but you literally just give it to a vendor, um, and then he'd just tell you if you won or not. You know, th it was kind of cool. I played it on the uh, Game Boy Color. Yeah, I mean, I got to think that they would include that stuff. Fans would get pretty mad. This is the first remake of a Dragon Quest that isn't from... Or it's got to be one of them, but maybe there's others. But usually Arte Piazza handles these. And this one's being done by this new... By Octopath Traveler people. I can't remember what their thing is called. That's probably a terrible thing to say on this, but... <laughs> I just don't know. I'm going to look it up for you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, but yeah, it's... It, I wonder if they're going to add like a post game dungeon in the same vein that they've done with the others. If I'm being totally honest, I don't really like the post game content that they put in like the DS versions. And I, I dabbled in the eight one and it, it was also not, I didn't love it. I just think it's way too spacey and separate from dragon quest. And this, the style just seems very off tonally. So I, I don't really care for what they've done. But I wouldn't be opposed to them adding some new endgame content that was a little more cohesive. So I get that. I know that it has its fans. You know, and I remember really when I played it back in the day, oh, Project Bird Studio by the or Armor Project. That's the name of the guys. Anyways. Uh, I remember liking it in Dragon Quest 4 when I played it back in the day. I remember not caring for it this time around when I played 4 and 5. Uh, so I would be okay with that out, a new ending. I wouldn't want them to compromise, you know, some of the mm -hmm. integrity of how the original one ended and, like, suddenly give it a, a different tonal ending. I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't played it. 
Yeah. Spike Chunsoft is what. There's a lot of uh, companies on this. Re on on this project. Uh, I'll read it for you from the trailer. Mm. 1988 2021 armor project slash bird studio slash spike chun sauce slash square enix yeah they i mean all those would all be because they, they've been in charge from the beginning but i thought they specifically gave it the developing meant to the uh the project octopath traveler people i don't know if that that might just be square sub square enix somewhere some company within that i don't know Maybe they just don't even point them out. But yeah, Arte Piazza usually handles this stuff. So we'll question mark. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm you, definitely curious. Did the 3DS ones? I thought it was still Arte Piazza. You're right. And Heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. So Heartbeat is the one that made six and seven originally art uh armor project was also considered a developer of the 3ds version of dragon quest seven mm. okay well we'll see how it goes i'm i'm <sighs> pulling for them hey, it's not a bad thing i'm Happy to say that. And I think I'm mostly optimistic. It's not even cautiously. I, I know it's going to be good and good for people who haven't played the original. Better than the Switch. I, I'm sorry, the iOS port that's on the Switch. I just think that's such a disservice to the series. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, play this game that was designed for phones on a console. We played Represent this. Represent what an RPG is like. We played the Super Nintendo version, didn't we? When we covered this? We played three, yes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding Japanese we played, is improving we played, just saying we played the Game Boy Color version obviously uh, Boku no new Nihongo o uh, i desu ne <laughs> yeah what he said <laughs> alright we got to <laughs> you ready to move on to the Chrono series yeah um, we're making progress digging the hole now we're digging up a whole new hole it's Chrono all right. Well, it's no secret. Chrono, the Chrono series, specifically Chrono Trigger, is my favorite game ever. I'm actually replaying the one that you guys got me for the the trip, and I plan to try I, to attempt to retire it. Although we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping to get all the endings and just kind of max out the levels and be happy with it. And I'm blistering through that game. It's crazy how fast you can just destroy it. Um, but with the Chrono Cross remaster coming out, well, it's come out and people seem to be pretty excited about Chrono, the Chrono series at the moment. Hopefully that lasts. Hopefully Chrono Cross doesn't kill that. Uh, I, there is some talk and there's nothing official, but it's, it'd be fun to talk about a Chrono Trigger remake. Now, having beaten Chrono Trigger twice, I believe, you, you're also in pretty good standing to talk about this. What would you hope for in a Chrono Trigger remake? Would you want like a complete overhaul or do you just want quality of life? What what are you into? See, the thing is like when Final Fantasy VII remake came out, I didn't care. I think what turned me off was that it, it reeked of things like microtransaction and paying for chapters. And I was just so, that that to me is like, we don't need to introduce that into series that we love. Mm -hmm. Me, it's more a fear of like ruining something that is so iconic and beloved. I didn't even necessarily have the biggest attachment to Final Fantasy VII, but the whole thing about that made me care even less. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I just want like a a strong consistent single player adventure i mean i'm interested to hear your take and then we can kind of bounce off that too it's funny you brought up final fantasy because i i would actually go towards that i i really don't think they can top the turn-based system that they had in chrono trigger to me that is like the perfect turn-based system especially when you do active it's just it's fast-paced it feels once you get into it, it to me it feels very intuitive and, and feels like you're moving. Feels like you're you're active, even though technically it is turn-based. 
but it just it's so tense and the timing is perfect and to me that that I don't know that I want them to try to reinvent that nor do I think they want to reinvent that so I would be totally cool with them going for another action based RPG now I don't think they have to do it the same way they did Final Fantasy nor would they I think it would probably end up something like the Sword of Mana updates where they're they're a little bit lower budget and I'm cool with that that's fine and I know the Chrono series isn't as big as Final Fantasy so why spend hundreds of millions or however much Final Fantasy costs them uh but I would like to see them make it an action R- action RPG and I think the characters make that make a lot of sense you, you got a lot of you got two sword users it's a couple ranged users you got a robot you got a melee in uh, Ayla you got whatever the hell Magus would be. <laughs> I don't know. That would be kind of cool. But I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. I need to ask a clarifying question. Are you desiring for a new installment or like a new Anchoff series that's not Chrono, but has that like that style? Or are you asking for a remake of the story of Chrono Trigger in the action RPG style? Or are you asking for a Chrono Trigger, an official Chrono Trigger 2? No, definitely not an official Chrono Trigger 2. Um, I think a remake of the original story of Chrono Trigger. I don't think Chrono Trigger, at this point, with Chrono Cross being canon, I don't think that's feasible at this point. I, I take that completely off the table. As much as I would like to see Magus' story play out and something happen there maybe he's the main character or something that that would be kind of cool but with chrono cross being in existence it's too much it's it's just it's not anything i want them to explore i i just if they wanted to with the with a remake of chrono trigger the, the actual story there i think they could create more opportunities for a sequel and maybe be like okay chrono cross isn't in this universe we can try again and we can make something great and maybe we do make a chrono cross but and we'll get into that later, but make make it a little bit better and and, and tie into the story smarter. Um, but as it stands, I don't want a Chrono Trigger two. Do you? I don't care. Uh, it's fine to me either way. I, I do think Chrono Cross complicates things, and I mean, if we're kind of transitioning into like the Chrono Cross remaster, we could do that officially. But like. I think technically the remaster of Chrono Cross impressive i don't know how much it really alters or changes or i mean clearly chrono cross needed some of that overhaul which i mean we could talk about but Mm -hmm. chrono trigger doesn't exactly like the question to me is remake remaster what because we like the original combat style i don't think it needs like Mm -hmm. massive changes i think like just some beautification there would be nice um I don't, I don't know. I don't have a great answer for it. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just think Chrono Trigger is too... I just don't see a way to make it better until you're just going to... At, at a certain point, you're going to be like, okay, we're doing all this effort. Let's just remake it and make something different. And I, I'd be all for it. Because there's no... You don't need to take Chrono Trigger and be like, let's... To me... It'd be like, let's make the graphics nicer. I guess you could. It looks really pretty. Like it's it's like a poster child for what you know you can do with sixteen bit graphics. I just think you might as well just remake it from the ground up and have it be its own thing. Kind of like Final Fantasy Seven. That that that's they're basically two different games, although they share elements. I think too is like Chrono Trigger has been available to play for quite some time, and I think like the Steam port has really amplified that. But we also got the DS port. There was also the Super Nintendo version. People pirate, mm-hmm. you know. It is kind of shocking that Chrono Cross has become so accessible, but we still can't seem to play Chrono Trigger on like Nintendo consoles. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe it was downloadable at some point, but what's with that? <laughs> so <don't> random. <laughs> Question mark. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Chrono Cross? This is a... (laughs) You ought to. Last time, when we archived Chrono Cross, we archived the PlayStation 1 version. 
and there was no news of any Chrono Cross since that original version. It might have been downloadable on the PS3 shop, mm -hmm. but that's not really accessible for a lot of people nowadays either. Now, not only has it been announced, but it's officially been released and people have been playing it and clamoring about it. Chrono Cross has been remastered and put on just about every modern console. I think I see advertisements for it on my Switch, PS4, Xbox, and in my Gmail for Steam. How do you feel about the existence of the Chrono Cross remaster? Uh, I'm as, you know, it sucks because my opinion on it has not changed and I haven't even played it. I have it downloaded and ready to go and I'm, I'm trying to find the way to start playing i have a million other things to do which you'll see later but i i'm disappointed um i see the graphics the the overhaul quote unquote i actually almost think it's a disservice in some ways uh in some ways it looks nicer it looks cleaner the edges are roughed out but the original artwork in Chrono Cross was not my problem with Chrono Cross. <laughs> I loved the portraits of people. I thought they looked absolutely gorgeous. Um, I thought even the, the characters, while, yes, they were polygonal, um, you could see the straight lines and squares, but I didn't have a problem with that. I thought they looked fine. I mean, it, it's fine to spruce it up for a remaster. The problem with Chrono Cross is so, is so much deeper than graphics or presentation. The presentation is the best part of Chrono Cross. <laughs> so to, to remaster Chrono Cross and be like, we're going to make it look prettier and sound different or better, whatever they did with the, the audio. I don't know why you even mentioned that you're touching the audio. I would stay as far away from that as possible. I would just say like you included the CD in it or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, th that is the least of its problems. It has serious story problems, like very deep issues with its story it has a character roster that is so bloated you could not give a shit about at least 80 percent of the cast you just don't care about him like why would you care about a uh, mushroom head guy like yeah he's a guy you can get you picked him. <laughs> like why listen i love the flower character okay <laughs> yeah it's like it doesn't make the game better it just it's like a weird thing that you you just get on your journey you, you forget that they're there um there are so many issues that a remaster is not I'm, I'm scared to hear people playing this for the first time and being like oh i loved chrono trigger like and i never got to play chrono cross for whatever reason they they maybe they're in the eu or maybe it's whatever reason and then they they bust out chrono cross and they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I don't... What, what, are, what are your thoughts on the Chrono Cross remaster? First thing I want to say for the listeners is that it's okay to have a different opinion. Spencer and I have somewhat different, <laughs> although also aligning opinions on it, and we're not going neck and neck at each other. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. Second thing is, well, I actually like the character roster system. To me, it adds a level of... Um, choice and replayability although you could make the argument that since your whole team levels up it doesn't really matter anyway you could just swap out at any time for any character and also halfway through the game your character roster gets swapped so i think that the character roster i don't know if i would call it a problem i just don't know if it was perfect design the fundamental flaw with chrono cross is that halfway through the game maybe a little bit more so, the entire narrative changes and suddenly rushes to become more connected to Chrono Trigger, which it didn't appear to be in the first half of the game. And that actually causes issues, especially when you're dealing with complicated things like time travel. When I first played Chrono Cross, I was like, oh, okay, I mean, this is interesting. And I tried to follow it and I couldn't. And then we talked about it and I tried to make sense of it and I couldn't. <laughs> and so, I mean, like I was in honeymoon phase a little bit. I was defending it, but I also knew it was pretty stupid. Like, you know, it, it should be you know, as clear as day. You know, and it just wasn't as like, well, I did, did the connections to Chrono Trigger come up late as they did i don't know if we've got like super concrete information on that we could come back to that in a second me i would have liked to see it handled 
better in like a remake sort of fashion. I understand making the remaster more accessible to people so they can have these conversations as well and start to see, you know, the handling, especially if they've come off of Chrono Trigger. I think, you know, what's tricky to me is like, I, I have more attachment to Chrono Cross than Chrono Trigger. I think it's like, mm. I found it in a way where it was like, you know, kind of unique and novel to me. And I like the, uh, like, uh, aqu not aquatic setting, but like the, it's that like beach style setting, like that yeah, marine style it's setting. Very unique. Like that's calming. The music is beautiful. The character art is spectacular. You could learn to like these characters a lot. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know the Yoshi system is interesting in making them dialectable. I don't know <laughs> if that's even a right use of that word, but yeah. I want to use it. I think that maybe this was a necessary thing to get Chrono Cross in more people's vocabulary. I do wonder if there is potential to handle the story better. If it's even a feasible task. If you put a team of like the best writers on it, can they fix the Chrono, <laughs> Chrono Cross plot and make it either like its own thing or really like the Chrono Trigger things make sense to like, you know, the average person? Yeah. <laughs> it's... There, it, it sucks because there's so much I like about Chrono Cross. I mean, like you said, like there are the the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. My favorite character in all of gaming, it's my literally my Discord picture, is Harl from Chrono Cross. It's my favorite character, um, and her story is actually really cool. But it's also part of this bigger story that doesn't make any sense, and it, it's weird when people. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's weird when people argue that it does make sense because if you ask them what the hell happened, nobody can tell you what happened in this game. It's like there's always these weird jumps of logic. Like, yeah, well, the 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 dragons came together and then they made us another one. It's like, how did they make another one? Well, it just they just did. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. <laughs> whatever you say they just did there's a lot of that in chrono cross and ironically chrono trigger which has is about time travel and has like i don't remember like eight seven or something different times that they have to make sense of there are like zero plot holes in it it makes perfect sense and it's a simple fun story and then chrono cross only has two dimensions but they decided to also inc include time travel in those two dimensions which like exponentially complicates things to the point it just it just makes absolutely no sense so i i am not a fan of chrono cross as a remaster i think it needs a complete remake i think i like if you're going to include a lot of characters give them more moves like more skill sets so that they feel like their own character instead of me having to just give every character 50 different skills every time i want to use them and just put them arbitrarily on a big grid which battle system too? I love the battle system. I have no problems with it. I think it's, it feels fluid. It's solid. It just sucks putting skills on new characters, and it just takes hours doing that. So, yeah. ironically, I need time. <laughs> I need time, but I do want to try it again. I just, I think if I go in, I'm gonna have to understand that the story is not. I'm not gonna come out of this with like, you know, any concrete fundamental feelings about the plot as a whole kind of sucks because everything else is like it's not broken everything else is not broken mm -hmm. you know, sometimes a thing can be game breaking like a, you know, a gameplay mechanic and for some people the the plot making no sense may not be game breaking okay but it's also hard to remove that from like my playthrough and my understanding of the experience yeah i mean i'm cool with bad plots i don't really care as long as the game also doesn't care but it's very clear especially like you're saying in the second disc that the game is obsessed with its plot it has long segments of talking and so like if it was just like an rpg where you just made your way through it sure i don't care if the plot's weird like i just played elden ring and i can honestly tell you i have no clue what happened in that game but it's a fun game, like, and it's got exploration, so you can just push that to the side. If the game was literally like five hours of cutscenes and it still didn't make any sense, I think I'd have a bit more of a problem. 
So it's just, it's how it, it does it. One, one of the worst things about Chrono Cross coming out is Reddit. And when Reddit comes out and people start going, because for some reason in Reddit, it's just like a, a hive of people going, should I play this game? And it's, just, it's like all that Reddit is. And people are like, so should I play Chrono Cross now that it's coming out as a remaster? Like, does it have any connections with Chrono Trigger? And people are like, no, it's got nothing to do with Chrono Trigger. You don't need to play that first. And it's like, that we it's it's misinformation on Chrono Cross. Have you seen some of this? My favorite example is when you posted the same question or same clip to both the Chrono Trigger and the Chrono Cross Reddits. And you got like completely different <laughs> responses on both. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. I kind of just like looking at it, just seeing like how wrong people are or something. It's not a sequel at all. Not in the slightest bit. It's clearly, you know, connected to the Chrono Trigger timeline. Have y'all played this? I think the problem is a lot of people haven't or they stopped before disc two and they have no idea that there is any like, clear Chrono Trigger connection besides the Masamune. Yeah. It's, I'm just like, if you don't know, shut up. <laughs> just don't say anything. Yeah. You, you know, you're better than sounding like an idiot online. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's insane <laughs> that people would say that. The problem is there's a mob mentality of people who are misinformed. So when they start to like feel like they're being validated and that they're right about this thing, they're just going to continue spewing it. People like I, I'll humble myself if I'm wrong about something, but we can talk about it online. People in comments do not want to talk; they want to shout at you. And so I'm sorry, you know. Like I liked Reddit for a phase. I liked going on there, sharing clips and stuff. I just think that if you're on a search for information, take everything with a grain of salt and try and come to your own conclusions. You know, read between the lines and also experience it for yourself. I don't know. I, Chrono Cross is like a primary victim of like, just, oh gosh, people being completely wrong about things. I'm sorry. I think, you know, what's cool about Steam is Steam has a, in there when they have like a review system, it also tells you how many hours the player that left the review has in that game. And so you can tell if somebody's bullshitting you because they're like, it's like 20 minutes in the game and they're like, no, the story's crap. It's, it's no good. Yada, yada. You can be like, okay, fuck you. And you can filter that out. You can be like, okay, I don't, I need people that have spent 10 hours plus or 40 hours plus in this game. There's no way to do that on Reddit. There's no way to do that on most things. Like you, there's no verify thing that says like, oh yeah, I've beaten this game. It's just people in a vacuum, just shouting at the void. And they're just like, no ties to Chrono Trigger. And we're supposed to be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then you play Chrono Cross and you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Like, why, why, why any of that mattered? And, uh, I mean, they're, all the characters are there. Like, Luca's like a main, like one of the most, maybe the most important character in the game, arguably. And it's like, you wouldn't know who that is or what, why that character is important. You would just be like, okay, sure. It just, it's, it should not be contentious to ask a question about if Chrono Cross is Chrono Trigger sequel. It's not, according to the developer. But the confusing thing is that the developer was kind of wrong on it, too. <laughs> you know, they're misinforming people, too. It's just a cluster. It's like a, a waterfall effect, you know? It's, well, and the one, user pointed, the one user pointed out to us that on the back of the box, it says the long-awaited sequel to Chrono Trigger. <laughs> so, oh, no. And the developer is saying it's not a sequel. Just what am I supposed to think? Get some mixed <laughs> messages. That's all we're saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to come at anyone. Listen, you know, it's it's not just Reddit. I mean, like you could say on YouTube as well, like comments. And I, it's I don't blame anyone, you know, for being misinformed or being wrong about something. Just ask like you know, to be more open being wrong. Yeah. Makes sense. You don't have to be right all the time. That's why you, that's why you talk. 
she can you can be right later you know <laughs> it's, it's insane uh, one of the cool things the, the thing i'm ironically most excited about with the remaster is not the remaster itself it's radical dreamers that we can get an official translation and uh, i'm excited to play it I, I looked it up it takes about four hours to beat it says 13 hours if you want to see everything uh maybe it's a text adventure i don't know if i want to devote that much time to that but it's uh it's very exciting for me because i've heard a lot of weird potentially misinformation on radical dreamers that it's like a prequel to chrono cross which i don't think it is i'm pretty sure it's like an alternate reality version of it or just like a not really connected uh canonically but we'll see i'll, I'll boot it up and take it for a test drive so that was probably the most jaw-dropping moment of the reveal to me when Chrono Cross Remaster was announced. It was like, really? This is getting acknowledged? I mean, as an insider who talked about that on a live archive, you know, I'm just like, you know, it just tickles my fancies or whatever. But most people, I don't think, like, would give a shit. But I'm like, oh, wow, that's actually a good fan service there. Do I expect this to close the gap, the, the narrative lore gap between <laughs> Trigger and Cross? Hell no, I don't. But I mean, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, what happened to Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Do we find out in Radical Dreamers? I don't know. But uh, yeah. I think he is in that. Is Magil supposed to be? Or no, Mag yeah, yeah, you're right. I think. And he was supposed to be Guile and Chrono Cross, but the story was so bonkers already. They had to freaking toss that shit out. Like, that tells uh, the, you how the bad the part game. is. Oh my god it, the best part is like they went from like one of the most iconic you know snes games and memorable legacy games of all time to a text-based adventure yeah the same characters did they Weird. just like <laughs> what what <laughs> we just wanted to take some time off but still make the same you know a game in the same universe it's should have funded this like what <laughs> it's creative very we'll give him that. All it's right. a fan fiction? What the hell? <laughs> I mean, it basically, and Chrono Cross feels like a fan fiction towards the end, too. So I, I, I want to not have that. <laughs> I'm going to start over with that. Look at it, but, you know. Yeah. Let's, see. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some SMT. This is more your wheelhouse. Um, five does have we we covered five we covered every single game that we talked about essentially in in an archive at some points so make sure you go check that out in the history we did recently do five and we did three before that and uh, make sure you check those out they're really really good shows yeah. and we wanted to talk because we didn't really talk about the dlc for five when we hit it um so I'm hoping you could elaborate a little bit on what players can expect from the five dlc Sure. Okay, so just a disclaimer, I did not buy the SMT5 DLC, but I've seen enough clips of it. The DLC, well, first off, you know how in the main game, Shiva is like the hardest boss. Yeah. Especially if you want to get like the true ending, you have to fight Shiva. Well, in the DLC, you fight the Demi Fiend, who's even tougher. And I think he's got like a fairy that has like a heal all or something. And he can consistently like bring back his enemies or make you skip your turns or something. So... I love the Demi Fiend as a character and the fact that they're like crossing over Nocturne assets, you know, like especially since Nocturne recently had the remaster. Cool. Love it. Is it really widely available? No. In fact, since we did the archive, it was actually pretty new at that time. The game had come out, what, November of last year or something? Yeah. And I think we finished it like two months later or something. Maybe it, was, it came out September. I don't have the dates right, but we still haven't seen the game ported to anything. And so, like, I bought the game in store. It's not like you can buy a digital deluxe edition. There is one on the shop. It's like 90 bucks or something. So I don't, to me, it's like, I don't know where to go. It's not even like available within the menu, et cetera, but it's there. People have been playing it and trying it. So that's cool. Especially if you feel like you really you know, want to delve deeper into it. My thing is like, you know, a couple months have passed and I'm a big SMT fan and I feel like I was mostly favorable to it and I still kind of am. I still like it. It's probably, it is the RPG that I put the most time into on the Switch. I've had to be reflective and it, since we finished it, I had actually tried to 100% complete the compendium and get every demon and I really just wanted to reflect on like, 
if that process is even worth doing and like how well the game really does hold up as an end product. So I'll start by just asking you, you know, we can kind of revisit some ideas that we talked about in the archive, but how do you feel about SMT5 as a whole, as a whole RPG? I think SMT5 was a really good RPG. I loved it. It might... It's the second game I've ever gotten all the endings to, but it's the one I prefer. <laughs> um, the the other one, it's not important, but uh, it. I don't know that it was worth getting all the endings because I didn't find the story to be that interesting. But it, like I said earlier, I don't need a game to be to have an amazing story. If it's gonna, fo- if I'm focused on the gameplay, and the gameplay to me was so solid that I had a great time with that game. Yeah, I remember you saying that during the archive that it's not worth going out of your way to get the true ending. I might disagree there because I feel like when you go for the true ending, there are sub stories that are opened up to you that actually kind of rebuilt the whole premise i didn't know about uh what's his name with the fox you know like on the kind of like tokyo side Mm. Uh, i i don't remember the names at this point um not ichiro dazai the other guy kuruzu or something his sister is like basically suffering from like a health condition and then there's this whole plot about her intermingling with like the gods of like the other side and even though it's a little like fetch questy about the things that you have to do for you know, to, to truly see that one through, it does result in kind of a more purposeful ending. I don't remember the ending exactly, but I remember it meaning more, especially because of the journey I went through to get there. It was by the time I was going for the third and fourth endings, I was just like, oh my gosh, enough is enough. Like, I, I even tried live streaming a New Game Plus round, and I was kind of bored out of my face. I was, But I was really just doing it to motivate me to go through it. The other thing is, like, I kind of did this because I wanted to see all of the demon lores. I want to see every demon. And at that point, it was just becoming so rote. There were a couple demons that were like quest exclusive. And I got punished one time for like trying to get a demon, but picking the wrong ending or something. And then like, you know, aligning my choices the wrong way. And it was just like, it was an exercise in frustration. Now, the main game isn't necessarily, I don't think that the story is as game breaking as something like Chrono Cross. It's not like it you know, is is trying to be overly ambitious in multiple ways. I just think it's underdeveloped and it's what it is. Um, it's a fine game. I just don't know about longevity. If I can really hold this to the same, you know, standard as I, I'm holding it to the same standard, but I, I don't know if it passes the same standard of, you know, whole scale RPG product that I kind of want. Mm. And that kind of sucks because I really did. I, I loved things about it just don't know if it like holds its same place for me after you know, really trying to lean fully into it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was completely happy with it, but I, I didn't need the story, nor did I. Like even in three, I didn't really need the story. It's cool that it was there, and I think it was probably a little bit better in three than it was in five because the characters meant a lot more and i just don't think the characters in in five i was expecting them to to have these grand you know uh, what what do they call it when people talk about like arcs or whatever they they call them or just progressions and they didn't they just said like uh i'm going this way now and the other one's like i'm going this way go all right makes sense (laughs) <laughs> they just kind of did it whereas in three you know you get to see these cool trans like almost and physical transformations as well where they're doing all these cool things and five it, it, they didn't i didn't see the effort with that which is again it didn't it didn't matter so much because the plot was irrelevant in some ways um but it, it was a little bit jarring to see that because they clearly cared about it in three and i think from what little i played with four they do care about it there as well it's like it's pivotal in four it's it's what the game is about it's like your relationships in a sense with like the main sides Mm -hmm. so like i it's kind of a betrayal of like the concept of the series even in like i think we were reading stuff about two or something that let you play with one of your party members 
or with one of them as a party member. Mm. In this one, yeah, you get their demon manifestation, but what does it matter when you're just slaughtering demons anyway in a new game plus? Oh, on yeah. the hardest difficulty. You know, it just it became cake after a while. And some of it too, it's to me, it's like they they really maybe spoon fed it a little bit too much. You know, because I mean I did not have any remote semblance of challenge in the new game plus after I'd beaten Shiva. Shiva was harder than the, the game's end boss, the true ending boss. Mm-hmm. By long so time. like the What's the point? Why, if I have to beat Shiva to get to the true ending boss, but the true ending boss isn't better than Shiva, then wh- why why did I do this? I would assume that the Archfiend, judging by how difficult Shiva was, I would assume the Archfiend is like a you have to cheese it. Is that what you're seeing in what in your videos? Oh, I don't know. I mean, like the the Archfiend. I took on Shiva on hard difficulty, by the way. I don't know if that made a big difference. I, mean, I also took on, down the Archfiend on hard difficulty. Hmm. And I, I had to kind of cheese Shiva because like, if you weren't careful, he would restore everything. But like, Archfiend was level 90. Shiva was level 96. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. There, it raises some questions for me, and I wonder like if it could have been handled better in some ways. You know, and this, it's a little disappointing, especially when you think about how long the game was in development. I think this maybe if they even took an extra year and just tweaked a couple things, maybe I've been okay with that. I, I think SMT5 represents, I guess I'll say it this way, a, a shortcoming or flaw of, of the channel that we're doing here, RPG Archive, in that with like three and with these old RPGs, we can dig up notes like post-game. Of like the the people that made it, the developers like, oh, we ran out of time, and like we couldn't we couldn't do this or that, or that's why this part this ending seems rushed, or that's why this thing's. There's a story somewhere in five about why the story just doesn't feel cohesive or feel as complete, or there's no big moment that you're just like, oh, everything is clear now, and it, it's I see the theme you're trying to tell me. Uh, I, there's a story somewhere, and it would be very interesting. Maybe down the line, there'll be a big remaster of this game, like a couple years. Like, all the cut content is in here, and we're like, whoa, there was cut content? <laughs> yeah, there was, turns out. <laughs> so that would be interesting, but I, you know, the way that we did this, it was to, to because it was new, and so we don't have those stories, so we can just, we have conjecture. But there's a story somewhere. Sure. We played it, you know. I mean, I don't regret that. Just my thing is, since it is one of my favorite series, I, I am going to hold it to a high standard. You know, I want it to be like a grand narrative I can come back to at any time. You know, I play, like I say, I don't do it every year, but I do say, like, I play Ocarina of Time annually. I do just about. It still means just as much to me, like, every time I play it. It doesn't change. Because it's, I feel it's a well-made game, narratively wise it's the whole package oh yeah smt5 is not the whole package you know everybody thinks that game is a whole package except for except for one angry alex <laughs> terry's there too terry doesn't like the ocarina of time oh terry if you're listening <laughs> what it's literally like the perfect game i don't know what you're th- what you're thinking ocarina of time is like a perfect game <laughs> anyway lots of best thinks it's Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, w- one of the more exciting things that we're talking about, I wasn't sure if we would ever, I would ever like record something talking this much behind the scenes of RPG Archive, but I always kind of wanted to. So I'm excited that we put this on the agenda here. If we are going to talk now about future RPG plans for the channel, and there are many, just because I've taken a little break, it's because of other things. Um, but but by the time you see this, there will be other things out. So shut up. So there's some future RPG plans. And as of today, officially, there are three that are guaranteed to come out. There's technically four, but we're going to list three here. Uh, Etrian Odyssey on the Nintendo DS. I'm playing the 3DS version, but it's the DS game. Etrian Odyssey. I'm playing the DS one, yeah. He's playing the OG. Uh, so look forward to that. And we'll talk a lot about Atlas on that one, I'm sure, and the making of that game. Uh, Elden Ring, 
I'm actually recording it tomorrow as of this recording. So I don't know when, when that'll be. I'm sure I'll release this soon. But Elden Ring will likely be already out by the time we do this. And this with JD. So I'm really excited. He's a good friend of mine. And I have a lot to say about Elden Ring. Um, Near Automata will be with Alex. That one's going to take a little bit longer um, because of Elden Ring. So thank you for that. But uh, it'll, it's the sequel to Near Replicant. Kind of sequel. Same universe. Whatever. Alex will probably yell at me for saying that. But it's a uh, it's further part of that universe. And it's uh, also a very interesting game. And there's a lot to talk about there. Anything with Yoko Taro. We will be doing some Reddit polls uh, on a segment we're, or section we're about to talk about, but there will be polls for each of those games as well of, of you know people's input. So look forward to those Reddit polls. Games we're thinking about or that I'm working on, uh, I've either started playing this, we've started playing some of these, or I will be playing it or we're planning on it. We're, we're not sure. We're going to put a big Reddit thing and, and figure that out. Um, the first one on this list, which would be the fourth, like pretty much guarantee that we're going to play, is Dragon Quest VI. Teddy, how are you doing on Dragon Quest VI? Listen, it's happening. It's just that, like you know, things have come up in the way. You know, I get distracted. I, it was a busy work season, man, and I really needed something like Etrian Odyssey. I'm actually really excited to learn more about Etrian Odyssey as well, and and our findings in an archive on that. Dragon Quest VI, you know, I've started it before and just stopped. I think this time around it's a little different because, like, you know, I managed to pull through and power through Dragon Quest V this time, whereas last time when I played Dragon Quest VI, I had stopped Dragon Quest V and just played a little bit out of curiosity. I want to do six. Like, I want to go further, and I haven't forgotten the bits that I've played this year. I've got a good five hours in. It's just that I had to put it on the back burner, but we'll have time. Excellent. We got Brian is looking forward to your thoughts on Dragon Quest VI. As is everybody. So, it's, yeah. I'm excited for it. It's actually low key one of my favorites. It's uh, it's not my favorite, but it's it's up there for me because of certain things. Um, we talked about this a while ago, and I I'm kind of itching to play it because it's so simple and yet it's like kind of addictive and stupid. But <laughs> Dragon Quest Heroes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. we, we mentioned, so, and there's one that we have to add to this list. I forgot about it, but I'll, we'll get to that in a second. We wanted to do, when we were talking about like these games, like Dragon Quest, like things that are maybe adjacent. And so like Dragon Quest would be one of, uh, Heroes would be one of those. It's a spinoff. Dragon Quest Monsters is definitely in the running as well of games that we want to play. But things that are Dragon Quest related uh, that aren't necessarily numbered versions. RPGs even. I mean, Heroes is a Musou. Mm-hmm. So, but at the same time, it's based in the RPG series Dragon Quest. So I'm cool to talk about it. I previously put a lot of time in. In fact, I'd be happy to just pick up my progress. I think I still have it saved. I just have to get another copy. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. That's something interesting to talk about. Uh, SMT4 is another one. It's a big maybe. It's time. That's really the only thing that's blocking me is time. Uh, you've beaten it probably a couple times. Alex has beaten is is on the pro in the process of beating. It. I think he any day now. Honestly, I'm just waiting for him to say that he beat it. Uh, I'm the only one that hasn't, and there's just not enough time in the world <laughs> for me to handle that at the moment. But it's on the uh, back burner. Uh, this is an interesting one, and it, and it breaks into another conversation. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and we would probably be playing the Switch remake. Um, the Pokemon series would be an interesting one to get into, and it would actually, yeah. in some ways, be the easiest, and in other ways, be the hardest. Because in some ways, it's easiest because we've literally played Red or uh, Gen One, Gen Two, and Gen Three for the button mappers already. We can literally just start recording a podcast and talk about it. The problem with Pokemon is it is there are so many videos about Pokemon and people generally know a lot about it. I don't know what I could add to that conversation. <laughs> it's and like like usually I like to be pretty like like cover a lot of bases on things. But to cover a lot of the bases on Pokemon, there's so much information available. I'm terrified of what that would look like, so I probably have to just trim it down. 
So I don't know. It, that would I think the positive edge of that sword, if it's a double-edged sword, would be that it's an easy entry point for a lot of listeners. Yes. So, yes. I think there's a lot of potential and also recording potential. Like I know red, right, and blue and yellow like the back of my hand. I got probably like 100 hairs on here. There's 150 <laughs> Pokemon. I could probably name most of them. Yes. But the, there is a question about like, well, do we want to present like findings and facts? I think there is an interesting kind of underexplored history to it as well, to the Satoshi guy and his like, you know, fascination with insects. You know, like, so I don't know. <laughs> there, there could be good stuff. But I think then once you start going into like the later generations, maybe the inspiration becomes a bit less and less. But it would be interesting to find out like what the hell happened. Like, why did these creative turns, you know, maybe take a dip? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's yeah. a lot to explore there. And it is something I've been meaning to talk to you guys about, about your interest in something like that. But at the same time, I'm in t- very intimidated by doing Pokemon. Um, yeah. But that'll be... We'll, we'll figure that part out. The next one you brought up today, which I'm very... <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know that was even on the table. Uh, which I'm super excited about is Xenoblade Chronicles. And if we did do this, we'd, we agreed it would probably be the Switch version what's your experience with xenoblade chronicles i think it's a great game sure all right so when it like first was announced with like the operation rainfall stuff on the wii i was checked out of gaming i didn't even know i didn't know the wii had rpgs in fact i found pandora's tower later at a GameStop. i was like oh that's cool i was like well, okay this has history xenoblade chronicles at first like became more accessible to me because that wii copy was scalped to hell and back probably one of the first big instances of modern nintendo scalping so I never thought it was even accessible. Then the 3DS version came out, but it was on the new 3DS. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to get that. Then the Switch version came out. And I I don't know if I had a Switch for like at that time. I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out before Xenoblade Chronicles Remaster on Switch. And I think I just didn't want to pay the 60 bucks. So I went online and got like a new 3DS version because I already had a new 3DS. And it was like one of three games that was new 3DS exclusive. And I was like, oh, I should probably try this. Yep. And so I played five hours into the new 3DS version. Honestly, kind of liked it. But again, I think the fact that I was like, this is kind of like a grand game with the Mechanis and the Bionis. And it's like, well, you know what? Maybe I should play this in the best way possible. So I would like to revisit that with the remaster version in one of the best ways possible. Dude, it's it's so good in a lot of ways. And if you go on the Xenoblade Chronicles Reddit, it's just pure cancer. So don't <laughs> bother. Uh, it, I've made my opinion clear on there, and, and it is not a popular one about that Xenoblade Chronicles is the only good one. There's Because there's Chronicles X, and there's Chronicles 2. And they're both like, oh my god, like not anywhere near the quality of Xenoblade Chronicles. It's almost like two different companies made it. It's pretty bizarre. Um, so that's an interesting one. But but I figure if we were going to tackle three at some point, two would come up. And X, God, I don't even know. <laughs> they might have to remake that one or something, and that might be more playable. I, I, mean, I could play it because I have a Wii U with that game. And uh, I can tell you, I was very disappointed when I played that. So it's not really worth X. Uh, next up on the list, we have Final Fantasy IX. If you haven't watched it, which you probably haven't, I did a little let's play of the a little uh, most, a, a good portion of disc one. Um, I adore that game, and I feel like they're going to announce a remake soon or some news from it soon. There was a big Nvidia leak. And that game was on the list. So I kind of wanted to start that, although, you know, plans taper. But if you're interested, you know, I'm, I'm down for nine. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, that's something me and JD talked about. Again, I think there might be a remake coming for that. KOTOR 2 is something with JD that I have made very slow progress on, but we'll expect that at some point. Persona 5, Alex, where are we? <laughs> and then also with Alex's project X Zone, which is almost like missed the April Fool's deadline for what game we were gonna do. I was gonna do Quest sixty four, but I just ran out of time. But um, maybe that'll be some other future one. Uh, and then one that isn't on this list that I was hoping we would talk about is Earthbound. 
I'm down. I just want to make the right time for that. Yes. Yeah, that's a 40-hour one. But my God, you will never forget your journey. <laughs> I'm ready. I have it on the... I would probably play it on the 3DS. I have it on... I mean, I could play the Switch version, but... Bought the 3DS one, so what the hell. Phenomenal. Anyway, that's it for Digging Through the Archive, Volume 1. Dude, hell yeah. And to the listeners at home, check out the subreddit. There'll be polls, uh, especially with the games that are guaranteed archives, like, you know, stuff about Etrian and Odyssey. We're not exactly sure what the question is, but we're formulating it. And then also, of the games that we're thinking about, be sure to let us know in the comments below which one you would be, one or ones you would be most excited to hear. So how did you like the, the process, the digging process? The digging process was good. We need to do some more of these, especially once we get some more of these games out there. Uh, there will be some more offshoots of this content, uh, probably related to companies or people, but, uh, stay tuned on that. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that, but the digging process is a lot of fun. And I really like our, like mapping out the future with it too, to give our, our audience something to look forward to. A little button map connection. <laughs> I'm out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much uh, for joining me, Teddy, and we'll see you guys next time. Requesting. <laughs>